I am not sure why our paths are crossing at this moment in your life or mine, but I imagine it's because you need to hear the message today. And you're probably listening to this podcast because you're ready to make a change. And for that reason, I'm really glad you're here. I'm Anna Gibbs, and this is Monday Morning Mojo. So if it's your first time joining me, welcome. And if you've been listening for a while, I want to thank you for that. And before I start, I just want to tell you that if this message resonates with you, make sure that you pass it along to a friend. And even though I am a certified life coach and an NLP practitioner, I am also a coach certified in emotional freedom work. I am not a therapist, and the information I'm going to share with you today is for your awareness, your education, maybe your entertainment. And if you feel that this conversation reveals that you need additional support, please seek that from a therapist, doctor, or another coach. All right. All that being said, what I'd like to talk about today is something that you may not realize is well within your control to manage, and that is your emotions. And it's an important conversation to have because these emotions that we have can change rapidly throughout the day. And I think that the ability to manage our emotions is part of something else, something bigger that we call emotional intelligence, which really is understanding our emotions and understanding how to manage them effectively. And I'm sure you can recall being in a situation at some point in your life where you felt overwhelmed by your emotions. Maybe you were angry, sad, or anxious, and you just didn't know how to handle it. And I think this happens to more people than we acknowledge. And I think that in 2024, we are living very big lives, and there's a lot of things happening around us at any given moment. And so our emotions are a normal part of being human, but Lately, they could be creeping up on us and we're finding it difficult to manage. And so I was compelled to want to share this message with you today here on the pod so that I can provide you with some tools. And I have done a lot of work as a coach and as a leader to help people really understand and connect with self-awareness, understand emotional intelligence. And what I can tell you is that our emotions... They're complex and they're rooted in our experiences. They're rooted in good and bad experiences. And they incorporate our thoughts, our feelings, and our behaviors. And as we explore this topic today, you'll quickly see why this is such an important thing to understand, develop, and manage. And I think that understanding our emotions is step one before we can hope to effectively manage them. When we understand what we're feeling and how those feelings affect us, then we can understand how to navigate it, how to manage it. And I think that we should definitely start by identifying some different types of emotions, right? They can range from happiness, love, anger, fear. And whenever we experience emotions, they have an effect on us. They can have a physical effect, they can have a mental effect. And you've been there, you know what I mean. You can feel your heart rate. You can feel that change. You can feel your breathing change. You definitely sense your mood changing. And again, to effectively manage our emotions, we need to be able to identify and acknowledge them. And it also means that we have to be able to recognize when we're feeling a certain way and give ourselves a little space and time to feel what we're feeling. I think for some people, when they feel fear or anger, they want to move out of it very quickly. And in doing that, you might not have the time to process it. I'm just going to normalize this for you guys a little bit. We're human beings again, and we have complex emotions. And so when you're feeling something, give yourself a minute, acknowledge it, and give yourself a minute to feel what you're feeling before you rush through trying to change your thoughts or change your perspective to feel something different. Your emotions are usually telling you something. So if you can connect with that feeling and plug in long enough, you may understand more about what's happening. 
something I say a lot is what we resist persists. And so we don't want to bury, we don't want to suppress, we don't want to ignore our thoughts or our feelings or emotions because we really aren't dealing with it. And so it's just laying there under the surface and what we resist will persist. Think of it this way, right? The law of attraction. The law of attraction states that like attracts like. By attempting to push certain experiences away, it only serves to draw it back in more. It only creates this almost magnetic effect where you start to feel more of that emotion. And so by focusing on what you don't want, you're actually calling more of that in. So for example, worrying, a lot of wasted energy, because when we start worrying, it is really just staying in that feeling and focusing on what we don't want. It's also important to recognize that we can control our emotions because they are complex and made up of our memories and our past. They're made up of our thoughts. If we change what we're thinking, we may change how we're feeling. So you are in control. Your brain is here to serve you and you can use your brain to your advantage and you can learn to control the way you feel. Now, for some of us, this might not be as easy at first, but it is something that you can learn to do. And when you begin to accept and believe that in itself can do a lot to shift how you're feeling. That in itself can really empower you to feel better almost instantaneously. So it's important to remember that your emotions don't have to control you. They don't have to immobilize you. You can control and manage them if you learn some of the tools. And it's important to remember that you have the power to do that. And that was one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this today, because my intention is to always support you and help you realize what you have the power to do in your own life, that you have the power to control so much. And so if you're feeling a little overwhelmed lately, if you're feeling fearful, anxious, it, it could be a result of what's going on in your world. And this podcast episode could serve as an opportunity to pay attention to that and to figure out what you might be able to release and how you can start to feel a little differently. So before we go any further, I just want to talk specifically about anxiety. And again, I am not a psychologist or psychiatrist. However, I do want to just share some thoughts with you about this. The Encyclopedia of Psychology defines anxiety as an emotion characterized by feelings of tension, worried thoughts, and physical changes like increased blood pressure. People with anxiety disorders usually have recurring intrusive thoughts or concerns, and they might avoid certain situations out of worry. And they may also have some physical symptoms associated with that, like sweating, trembling, dizziness, or rapid heartbeat. And again, I am pulling this information from the Encyclopedia of Psychology. What we know to be true in, psych in psychological terms, we refer to anxiety as a secondary emotion. In other words, it's often experienced as a result of an emotion or it is felt in place of another emotion that is difficult for the person to feel or express. So I'll say that again. Anxiety is what we call a secondary emotion. It shows up as a result of an emotion or it's felt in place of another emotion that you might have a hard time expressing or feeling. And high levels of anxiety are often experienced by many people. And so if that is something that you are struggling with, I just want to send my support to you and tell you that some of the things that we're talking about may trigger you. Some of the things that we're talking about may feel right, some may not. And so this is your opportunity to know that I recognize that this is not the same experience for all people and that I just want to make that clear. Again, if, if you feel like this is really something that you're struggling with, managing anxi anxiety itself, could just the thought of that could be overwhelming. And so while there are lots of ways to reduce anxiety on your own, if this is something that is chronic or at a high level for you and can't be managed on your own, please discuss that with a practitioner that can help you. I just wanted to be sure to say that. If you feel that you're experiencing anxiety, 
on a lower level that you recognize could be coming as the secondary emotion from other things that maybe you're feeling um, challenged by or you're just not able to express, I can share some things with you that might help reduce anxiety. And these are options and things that you might be willing to try. And like I said, it might work for many of us and it may not work for all, but it's definitely worth sharing. And again, I want you to know how much I can appreciate whatever unique situation you're in. And if you could understand some things that you can really use even on a daily basis to just manage some of these symptoms around anxiety, and it helps, that to me is so worth the 30 minutes that you're spending with me on this podcast today. So some things you probably have heard of before or tried before, I think one of the first things I could say is to focus on breath. And the way that our, we use our breath can really change so much around how we're feeling and regulate our nervous system. And so even just taking a moment to take a deep breath from the diaphragm can do a lot to reduce anxiety. It's a very simple but powerful tool. And, and what's interesting, because it is so simple, yet we many times forget about it. I have one dear friend in particular She's like a sister to me. We've been friends for 25 years. And I find that I often have to remind her to breathe because I can literally see the breath getting stuck in her body. And if she can just be aware of that and take a deep breath, you, you visibly see the relief on her face. You can hear it in her voice. You can sense it in her breathing. And sometimes if we're not aware, we can really find ourselves very tense. We can find ourselves really not using our breath. And so just that simple act of taking a deep breath, filling up your lungs, breathing from the diaphragm, and this long exhale can really do a lot to help you. And throughout the day, you can use this technique anytime you're feeling a little anxious Anytime you're feeling some pressure mounting or just feeling a little overwhelmed set in, you can always take a minute to sit back in your chair, let the chair support you and practice doing some deep breathing exercises. Repeat it two or three times. I guarantee you, you will feel different. You will feel better. The second technique or tip I can share with you around reducing anxiety symptoms is don't fight it. Like I said to you a few minutes ago, if we could just take a moment to accept what we're feeling, doesn't mean we want to stay there forever, but we just want to accept the fact that, yeah, I'm feeling anxious. Yes, I am feeling fearful. And just remember that it's part of the human experience. That can do a lot to just dial it down even a little bit. And just remind yourself that you're okay. Remind yourself that you choose to recognize that you're okay even though you're feeling this way. And because again, denying those feelings or pushing them down or suppressing them will only make those feelings multiply and it can only make it feel worse. Don't fight it. The third one that I could share, the third technique is, and you might even find this is a process. You could do this in order, taking some deep breaths, changing your state a little bit, regulating your nervous system just talking yourself through it to say, okay, I'm not going to fight this. I'm not going to judge myself. I'm going to be kind to myself and say, okay, I'm feeling something and I'm going to allow that to be what it is. And then move into just ask yourself some questions. When you get anxious, oftentimes our brain can go into overdrive. And when that happens, your imagination can start to run wild too. So by taking a moment to think about what you're feeling could rein in some unrealistic thoughts. So if you could ask yourself maybe these three questions, and we'll put them in the show notes so that you have them as well. The first question I guess I would have you ask yourself is, whatever you're worrying about, is it realistic? Like, could it really happen? Or is it just somehow that your brain has allowed you to get on the imagination train and it's running a little wild? And if it is really true, or does it just feel that way? That would be the second question. Is this really true, or does it just feel this way for a moment? And while anything is possible, 
I think what tends to happen is we jump right to the worst case scenario. So when you ask yourself if this worry is realistic, recognize that you might just be going to the most extreme possibility, but it may not be the most likely to happen. And because of that, you have to really question whether or not this is true. And then the third question to ask yourself is, okay, if I go to that very worst possible case scenario, would it be something that I could come back from? What would be so bad about it? If you allow yourself to go there, what is the worst case scenario? Then you can start to think about, okay, how would I bounce back? We can all look back at things that happened in our lives that at the moment we were thinking it was the most detrimental, the worst thing possible. It was something that we were never going to come back from. And now so many years later, we see that just wasn't true. We were able to figure it out. We were able to bounce back from it. And so those are some questions that I think if you could take the time to ask yourself when you're feeling the most anxious can help you put yourself back in control of a situation. The fourth tool I could encourage you to use and to develop is visualization. So in the same way that your breath can calm you down, visualization can do a lot to calm you down too. You can choose to meditate, even if it's just for a moment or two. You could picture yourself somewhere else at the moment, have this out-of-body experience and transport yourself somewhere else, wherever you love, right? So maybe you're going through something medical right now and you're going through a lot of tests. And at those moments when fear is really setting in and anxiety seems to get high, could you allow your visualization to transport you somewhere else and picture yourself on the beach, picture yourself in the mountains, and really create this multi-sensory experience where not only can you see it, but maybe even start to smell it, maybe even start to hear it, right? You hear the waves coming in and allow yourself to be transported. And that can also dial down a lot of the anxiety that you're feeling. Another technique that I've talked a lot about now here on this podcast is just really the ability to observe. And I've used the term awareness. If you could really develop the ability to observe yourself, to take a step back and reflect and to acknowledge and observe those emotions without judgment. Remember, we don't want to do that. Don't assign any meaning to whatever you're observing. Just observe it. Don't attach anything positive or negative to it because if you do, that's only going to amplify your emotions. But if you could just observe and maybe ask some of those questions, what will you learn by doing that? How could that help you to practice even some more love and compassion for yourself? Because it gives you the ability to be your own coach in a way. And when that happens, you want to use positive self-talk, you want to express self-love, you want to be kind to yourself, you want to minimize that anxiety, not amplify it. So by doing that, you're learning how to cope too. And the last thing I'll say on this, as far as some techniques, is just to focus on right now. A lot of people, when they're feeling high levels of anxiety, it's usually about worrying about something that's possibly happening in the future, something that could happen. It's usually not about something happening at the moment. So if you could pay attention to the present moment, if you could bring yourself right back into that moment, would that help you to regulate more of how you're feeling? I believe that most people truly can control how they're feeling. And if you can control, you can change. Remember, what you can't control, you cannot change. You can't control a lot of things happening in this world. You can't control a lot of things happening in the economy. You can't control a lot of things happening in government in fill in the blank. <laughs> but what you can control is you and how you feel. That is possible. If we can control our emotions, then we can control the way we feel. And the opposite would be true too. What is out of our control, we cannot change. And so 
we have to recognize that swirling in or obsessing over negative emotions or things that are out of our control will just make us feel more powerless. And guys, I've been there. I'm a mom, <laughs> right? As a mom, we're worrying about a lot of things for our kids and our grandkids and people that we love. And we just have to rein that in a little bit. We have to understand that if we get ourselves to a point of worrying too much about things that we can't control, we're just going to feel helpless. And that is going to shut down more of our logic and it's going to put us in a state of feeling helpless. And so if, if you take something away from this message today is that there may be much more in your control than you've been giving yourself credit for lately. And it's okay. You just might need more awareness around it. You might need some of the tools or techniques that I'm sharing with you here today. And it's just understanding a little bit more about how we operate, how our brain works, how we feel. And look, here's the other thing. There might be times too when your negative emotions can be helpful because those negative emotions might be revealing information to us. And that might actually help us to make good or better decisions. It's just being connected to how we feel. And if you can raise your awareness to tap in and ask those questions, then you can figure out what these emotions are trying to say to you. Rather than asking, why is this happening to me? We could choose to ask, what will I learn from this? What can I take from this experience? And I know that sometimes that's easier said than done. But if you think again, back on, let's say the timeline of your life, and you think about some experiences that you've had that maybe at that moment were really hard, maybe at that moment they were painful, maybe at that moment they were negative. If you can look back on them now, I guarantee that you will find lessons, right? You will acknowledge that you have carried something with you. You've learned something from that. It has made you a better person somehow. It has given you some ability to manage the next challenge differently or better. It definitely has given you something that you can say now is positive. I've talked a lot about your thoughts and your feelings here because they're so connected. And I think the key to managing how we feel could start with managing how we think. And the only things we can truly control in life are maybe our thoughts and those thoughts become our feelings and all of that becomes how we act or our behaviors. So if we can manage those, we could really learn to achieve any goal we set out. We could gain deeper relationships. We could gain success. I think to have that level of control though, we need to learn more about some of the science behind all of this and understand more about the patterns that might be showing up in our emotions, in our thoughts so that we can manage them. So if you find yourself responding in a similar way to situations, that could be telling you something too. And so as we really learn more about all this and start to identify those patterns, then we could be much more intentional about how we're influencing our thinking and what's influencing our thinking. Because what we think about most is what we become. And what we surround ourselves with most is how we begin to think and feel. And so I think we have to evaluate sometimes where we need to make some changes. And if we could evaluate our reality more clearly without the distortions that sometimes show up. And that could help us to make better decisions and improve our capability to cope and to thrive. Imagine what could be next for us. Imagine what starts to change and open up for you in your world. So when you become aware of those negative thoughts, take a pause before those thoughts become more negative feelings. Just take a minute. So when you feel that negative thought creep in, when you're prompted to complain, when you're prompted to see the glass half full, just try to be aware of that. Take a moment and ask yourself, well, maybe first, before you ask yourself, take those deep breaths and then ask yourself, where's it coming from? Is this real? Is it true? And if you could get outside or stand up from your seat, you could walk around a little bit, that helps a lot too, because 
Now you're changing your physical state. So you took some deep breaths, you asked a few questions, your mind's working in a different capacity now to answer those questions. And you add to that some movement. Now you're changing your physical state and that creates a new pattern. It's basically interrupting the pattern you were in. And a pattern interrupt can be an amazing tool to help you change things. Those are some ways that you can shift your mindset and start to see things in a different light, maybe more positive, maybe more joyful, maybe more realistic, and maybe with more opportunity laced in there too. Another great tool for shifting how we feel could be gratitude, expressing, feeling gratitude. They say gratitude is our highest vibration. So Maybe part of this process could include reminding yourself what you're grateful for, reminding yourself what you already have that is very positive in your life. So you can shift from that negative thought to something much more positive, something much more exciting and gratifying. So those are ways to to change and shift your thinking, to shift your feelings, and, and to really then get back in the driver's seat and really be in control. So I hope this conversation helped you. I, I, I felt really compelled to get on and have this conversation with you today. This podcast is called Monday Morning Mojo. It was designed to be the conversation you have early on a Monday morning where you could pause and you could have some thoughts or a different perspective that could shift your thinking, shift your feelings and give you an opportunity to create change or go after the big things you say you want. Because I believe that we all have that ability. We just might need the tools. We may not always have the clarity. We may not always have the tools. And so that's what inspired me to become a coach so many years ago, because I really want to be a part of creating change for people. And I want to be a part of the process that supports people so that they can live their best life. I felt like this conversation around emotions was just essential because it's the root of a lot of what we talk about here on Mojo. And so just to recap, we talked a lot about changing your emotions and there are great ways you can do this very quick and easy ways throughout the day. Whenever you're feeling overwhelmed, anxious, fearful, annoyed, frustrated, all secondary emotions, maybe even angry. I will tell you that by using some breath, by moving your body, by asking some questions, by expressing gratitude, a lot of things we talked about here on this episode can really start to change things for you. And with change comes opportunity. If you found this podcast episode to be really helpful to you, I guarantee it would be helpful to someone else. So think about someone that you care about right now and send them the link so that they can listen and just know that this is your one great life and you have the ability to do what you really want to do in your life, to live a full and exciting life and you deserve that. And so I thank you for joining me today and I trust that you found this to be helpful. And so if there's anything that you want to share with me, feel free to drop me a note. Let me know how this episode or any episode has helped you. I love your feedback. It's encouraging and inspiring and that really anchors why I do this. So I would love to hear from you. And I also definitely appreciate you giving this podcast a five-star review because I want to be able to continue to do work for people out there who really want to hear how they can move past anything going on in their life and just step past their limitations. So in order to do that, in order to reach bigger audiences, I definitely need your support. So I appreciate your reviews. I appreciate you giving it five stars. I appreciate you sharing it. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.